One of the biggest roadblocks for aspiring artists is learning how to conquer bad anatomy. So how did I go from putting out absolute hot garbage like this <laughs> to work like this? Wow. In this video, I'm going to share with you not some, but all of the art books I have ever used and why I believe these are some of the most essential books out there for artists. And you may be surprised by how few books are actually on this list. So without further ado, let's get it. Now you might be asking, do I really need anatomy? Can't I just lean on my style? And in some cases you can, but usually no. And I'll tell you why. First, you need to understand what is anatomy and what is style. Now, anatomy is basically the study of reality and styles are deviations from that reality. And so from reality, you get the various styles such as realism, which is a style. It just deviates very little from reality. And then you've got semi-realism, stylized, etc. And each of these individual styles also have derivatives of their own. Oh. Now, the relationship between reality and styles is a one way street. Why is that? Because reality informs styles. Styles cannot inform reality, obviously. So when you need to develop and enhance your style, where do you go? Well, you go to reality because reality is where you find out about forms, perspective, values and so on. And with that knowledge comes confidence and you can use that to make or break rules where they apply to arrive at your style, whether it be one that exists or one of your own creation. And you do that by applying design principles on top of your knowledge base. Now, what does this mean? It means that if you spend all of your time only developing one style, for example, you're going to be very limited one because you're neglecting the fundamentals and two, if you ever have to, for whatever reason, transfer over to another style, you're not going to be able to quite easily. You may be able to get away with it a bit if you apply some basic design principles, but even then those are most expertly applied when you understand reality. Otherwise, you may end up as that person who uses style as a bad excuse for bad design and bad anatomy. We all know that guy. And so I encourage you all to really study anatomy because as an artist, the amount of creative freedom you have is directly proportionate to the amount of responsibility you're willing to take on. In this case, the responsibility of learning anatomy and reality. And when you master this, you're actually way more free to explore all of this very effectively. Now, it is time to get into this list of books, each of which will have an affiliate link below. This video is also the first of an ongoing series where I will go over how to do studies from each book respectively. So if you don't want to miss out, be sure you subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you do not miss an upload. And if you like the video so far, feel free to hit that like button while you're at it. Now, let's see these books. This is Bridgman's Complete Guide to Drawing from Life. Now, George Bridgman is actually the first artist I studied from, but it wasn't this book. It was actually a series of books, one for constructive anatomy, one for heads and hands, and so on. But this book is actually a great consolidation of almost all the material that comes from his longer series. Learning anatomy is a process of simplifying the complex forms of the human body to a degree that is comprehensive and digestible. And Bridgman does a great job of doing just that. He manages to simplify the human forms into basic shapes, showing you the perspectives very clearly and displaying the rhythms in a manner that is simplified and exaggerated really to make a point and drive it home. I'm going to include examples of some of my early studies from Bridgman from many years ago. I would say that this book is great for all levels, including beginners who want to get a broad understanding of anatomical forms and rhythms. And now on to the second book.
Dynamic Figure Drawing by Bern Hogarth. Now, this was the second artist I studied from, and as the title suggests, this is all about drawing the dynamic figure. Now, with Hogarth being a comic book artist himself, it makes sense that his book would be about drawing dynamic figures since, after all, comic book artists do have to pull out some crazy poses all the time. Now, much like the previous book I mentioned, this one does a great job of simplifying the forms as well, albeit in more of a comic book style. But what I really gathered from this artist was knowing how to overlap your contour lines effectively to convey foreshortening. Now, what's great about his drawings is that if you look closely, you'll notice that the markings are quite visible and you'll notice that they all follow the forms. It gives a great sense of volume and this coupled with the overlapping contours really adds to the illusion of foreshortening. Here are some examples of my earlier studies of Hogarth before we move on to the third book. Drawing Course by Charles Barg. Where do I begin with this one? This book is best utilized with a basic understanding of value and form already. It teaches a process I often hear referred to as the Atelier Method or the Barg Method, a method by which your subject is depicted through the use of simplified shadow shapes and contours. If you've seen any of my earlier videos, you might notice that this book is largely responsible for my process to this very day. I would go so far as to say that this is one of the best ways to simplify and understand complex forms so that you can draw them in a realistic manner. The life drawings inside do a great job of demonstrating just how much you can convey with only the use of simple yet effective contour lines. Couple that with the use of shadow shapes and you've got yourself a great start to a very strong piece. These methods are best utilized for longer studies. And with that, let's move on to number four. Anatomy for the Artist by Gino Barkse. I'm probably butchering the hell out of that name, so I hope you can forgive me for that. How much really needs to be said? I mean, just look at the cover. The quality of the drawing says it all. The attention to detail, the subtlety and the cross hatching. This book is great for picking up on the finer details of anatomy. Drawing from life and photo reference is one thing, but when you use books like these as reference, it really puts you into the mind of the artist. The visibility of their markings allows you to essentially tread the same steps as the artist without having to do the labor of looking at a live model. And through that, you get a sense of what it would take to depict reality to such a degree without that crutch. And that brings us to the final book on my list. Let's go. Not to be confused with the previous book of the same title, Anatomy for the Artist by Sarah Simblet is a different beast altogether. Now, unlike the previous books, this one isn't one that I've had to do direct studies from in order to get a lot of value out of. With its deep dives into the various systems of the body, as well as the anatomical overlays that are drawn on top of the photos, it serves as a great source simply to get a greater understanding of the human figure. It's also a great book to have lying around if you ever need a source of reference for any of the gnarlier aspects of anatomy. And there you have it. That is my list of essential books for learning anatomy. And these are all of the books I have ever used. 
Now keep in mind that it's not about the amount of books you have to study from, but the quality of your practice. Now don't forget to like the video on your way out and subscribe because I've got more coming for you soon. So until next time, peace.